This is going to be a video preparing for the trading day tomorrow, Wednesday, February 27th. First stock I'm going to look at is Apple, which closed the 26th at 448.97. So I'm going to make a note of that. Closing price 448.97 with a range of 437.66 low, 451.54 high on 17.8 mil in volume. And gonna go over some what to watch for's out of Apple. Okay. So today, the stock traded in a pretty tight range for much of much of the morning. If you look, so our range was. 447, 444.70 on the high to 437.66 on the low. So it was only a $7 range up until this big move here around 130. So I'm going to focus in on the first few minutes of today and try and key in on why it was such a tight range. Okay, so that way then for tomorrow, if I see the same type of characteristics display themselves in the first few minutes, then I'll know to expect a similar tight range as well. So first thing I see, I focus on that first three minutes range, 442.28 low to 444.32 high. Then the high beyond that was 444.70 and it didn't really advance beyond that high, uh, that first three minute high by much. It was only as well, it didn't extend above the opening price of 443.56 by more than a dollar and 24 some odd cents. And it also didn't go below the first three minute low until, you know, 939. Nine, 942, so it took 12 minutes. So first thing I want to watch for in terms of volatility is a greater than a $1.26 move above the open. No, sorry, I'm going to subtract 444.70, that the second three minute high from 442, uh, 443.56, the opening price. And that's a dollar and 14 cents. I'm also going to take what our low was. 443.56 minus 442.28. That was a dollar and 28 cents. So I want to see is it able to move above the open by greater than a dollar and 14 cents or below the open by greater than a dollar and 28 cents. I want to see one of those two things play out within the first six minutes tomorrow to signal that it's going to be a wider range morning as compared to today because like today showed seven dollar range that's a generally a tight range on Apple okay so I'm going to write down ability to go above slash below one dollar 
14 cents, that's the above side, or $1.28 around the opening price. So ability to go above the opening price by $1.14 or ability to go below the opening price by $1.28 within the first six minutes. That's my first what to watch for. Secondly, want to focus on the action that kind of signaled a big move was coming. And that, that's really this right here. Okay, this big volume spike and big move. So first of all, I want to measure the move it was able to make in a single three minute candle. So it closed that candle at 439.94, closed the next one at 443.47. So 443.47 minus 439.94. So it made a $3.53 move in a single three minute candle. Okay. And that ended up being good for another $7 move from 443.50 up to 451. And that played out over the course of an hour and a half. So, my next kind of what to watch for is going to be. greater than, let's call it a greater than $3 move in single three minute candle to sing, signal potential $7 move over 90 minutes. Okay. So my first criteria has to do with kind of range in terms of what does it do at the open. My next criteria has to do with, you know, a big move that happens kind of later in the day and how that sets the stage. And then what I also want to focus on is just overall volume pattern. So today, again, was a relatively tight range day. And that was coming on volume of, you know, less than 240, 280,000 shares. After 10 o'clock, it didn't really do any candles where the volume was greater than uh, 200,000 shares, except you had one here at 1021. But other than that, you didn't have many above 160K at all, really. So in order for a move to happen, I want to see you know greater than 160K three-minute volume pace post 10 o'clock. Because what today told me is if you don't get that volume, then you can expect sideways for uh, much of the morning from 10 to 12. All right. I want to focus on the last day that Apple did trade in a really wide range with some good downside or upside and I want to see kind of what was the criteria 
on those days. So yesterday, and again, Apple did trade in a wide range today. Okay, I mean, thirteen dollars is certainly a wide range. But my point is, is it didn't give you that in the morning. Okay, it didn't give you that type of range trading at the open. Same thing yesterday. Yesterday, Apple traded in a twelve dollar fifty cent range or so. But again, oops. See, Apple traded between 455 and 448, you know, really until again 130 or so. And then the last hour of the day is when the range opened up and it traded all the way down to 442. So yesterday, even though it did trade in a wide range, that's another day where it didn't give you a wide range at the open. So again, I'm going to look at yesterday again and see kind of what what was the cracking point in signaling that the range was about to get opened up. I identified that today it was that greater than a three dollar move in a single three minute candle. Okay. Yesterday, the range really started to open up on this fall here from 447 all the way down to 442-ish. So you got a $5 move in about 45 minutes. That's, that's very good uh, for late in the day. And that happened when Apple had volume of 154,000 shares on a three minute after previously doing volume of only 52,000, 70,000, 79,000, you know, very, in other words, very low volume. So one of the things I want to look for, if you're going to get range extension later in the day, is I want to see a three minute volume candle that is 100,000 shares greater than the previous three minute volume candle. Okay, you see that you see that as an example yesterday at 312, which sparked that volume, uh, that range extension. And then if you apply that to today as well, I suspect you saw the same thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously 32,000 shares and then all of a sudden you had 230,000 shares. So big, big time volume increase. So what I'm going to say is three minute volume pace that is one hundred K shares greater than most recent three minute candle. You can see here's a volume spike also right here at 1233, but it wasn't greater than, it wasn't 100,000 shares greater than the most recent uh, candle. So that's, that's a good indicator that'll signal range extension. So three minute volume pace that is 100,000 shares greater than the most recent three minute candle to signal range extension. All right, I'm going to go over some levels to watch on Apple, resistance and support levels here. Resistance levels, these highs up here, a lot of congestion that went on uh, late in the afternoon. 
first one I see, 449.05. And then above that, 450 is, is the obvious one. Oh, sorry, wasn't looking at the correct. Okay, here we go. So my first one, actually, I'm going to put is the fifth, the last high of the 15 minutes, which was 450.44. Above that, you've got this previous high at 451.54, which was our high of day. Beyond that, got to do a little, little more, little more work here, and take a look back at yesterday's action, and see where our resistance levels reside. So then I see these highs here, 452, you know, 80s, 452, 96. So I'm just going to call it 453. And we've got these highs here, 453.80. 455 up to 455.12 was the high day yesterday. So 455 to 455.12. Right. Looking back even further on the three minute chart, so we've got this action here. Four fifty six ish, four fifty six twenty one. And then four fifty seven sixty nine. And you had a close up there on four fifty nine ninety six. So you had a gap down and drop. So above 457.69, which was our high from Tuesday the 19th, uh, no, sorry, Wednesday the 20th was, was the high. You've got that open gap. So definite, you know, between the 458 and 460 is just kind of a resistance zone. Beyond that, we've got these highs up here, 461.34. And if, you know, if Apple is pressing 461.34 from today's close around 449, then, you know, the stock is up over 2.5% and it's having a great day. So that'll do for the resistance points for now. Now as for support, this low here is really important. This was really the power hour low, 447.25. And then you had this low here at 445.90. Are there other lows before 445.90? Sure. but this is really kind of the one, the 
the 447.25, that's the one that needs to hold. You know, if you come in and you put in a low at 447.50, that's a higher low versus this low, that'd be a good sign for Apple. Below 447.25 though, and I expect this 445.90 level to get tested, below that, and you know, you're going to start coming back down towards the 445 level overall. So below 445.90, you have the morning high of 444.70 down to 445, or up to 445 rather, as support. Then you've got a couple lows here. You've got this low here at 444.17. Got a low here at 443.50. 442.84. You could see was resistance earlier in the day, so let's see if that would become support now. And then below 442, you know, you've got this 440-50-ish level. And then 440. And then all these lows right here. 439. 438.40. And... 437.66. Below today's low of 437.66, and Apple is in serious trouble. Okay. Let's talk about some scenarios now uh, bullish, bearish scenarios on Apple. I'm going to do bullish first. Uh, today, it was unable to extend and hold above the opening price. So a bullish scenario is going to be uh, Apple holding above its opening price okay, and making a greater than $1.14 move to a new high within the first 16 minutes. Okay. Hold above open price with the ability to move greater than one dollar and fourteen cents above open to new high by nine thirty six. Okay. And if it's going to have a really good day, it should be, you know, above today's high of 451.54, you know, within the first 10 to 15 minutes. And if you get that, 455 is in play to me. If 455 comes by 10 o'clock, then 460s are in play. Okay, uh, bearish scenario. Uh, ability to make a new low after 9.33. You can see it wasn't able to do that right away. Yes, it did that, but not until 9.42. Okay, so in a bearish scenario, I'd like to see Apple move below the opening three-minute low during the 9.33 to 9.36 sequence.
And then after that, I'd like to see it then remain below that initial low thereafter. For instance, so 442.28 was the low today uh, within the first three minutes. You can see that once Apple went below it, okay, it's then started remaining below that low. You can see this move up here around 11 o'clock, that was a great shorting opportunity. Okay. Okay, if it's really bearish, 445 test by 945 sets up 440 test. Okay, if 440 test by 10 o'clock, then 435 in play. Neutral, as in not expecting much movement. I would look for that if Apple, you can see, hasn't traded in greater than a, let's see here, the total range within the first 30 minutes today was less than $5, so less than a $5 range by 10 o'clock uh, signals, you know, sideways action until at least the afternoon. Alrighty, let's talk about a potential gap up in the stock. It would, I'd like to see it if it gaps up above 451.54, today's high, within the first three minutes, and avoid going more than one dollar below opening three minute low. On a potential gap down, volume must stay high. and needs to remain below open. Okay, so that's the prep for Apple. Now I will take a look at Amazon. Amazon closed today at 259.36. Oh, lastly, on Apple, as a part of my prep work, I like to come up with kind of a gut feeling that I have uh, regarding the stock overall. On Apple, that feeling is south of 450. It's going to 435 at some point. Okay, that's just my gut feeling. So, Apple, as long as it's below 
450. It's going to 435 soon. And it needs 455 plus to set up a potential revisit of the 470s. All right, so Amazon. Amazon's interesting. It experienced its first five-day losing streak today in quite a while, if I'm not mistaken. And at least the last 100 days. Yeah, Amazon hasn't had a five-day losing streak since this stretch here in September. So this is its first five-day losing streak since September for Amazon. And before that, it had one in June. Hasn't had a six-day losing streak all year, OK? I don't see. Here was a five-day losing streak in November 11, uh, November 2011. Another five-day losing streak in August 2011. Yeah, so Amazon hasn't had a six-day losing streak in, in at least two years. All right, so the last six-day losing streak in Amazon looks like it was June 2010, from June 17th through June 24th, okay? So first little note I'm making on Amazon is no six-day losing streak since June 2010. So right away, the odds are in the bull's favor, uh, simply on probabilities, because Amazon uh, has had a five-day losing streak. So tomorrow, if it closes red again, it would be the first six-day losing streak since June of 2010. So just right off the bat, in my eyes, that shifts the favor to the bulls, because you know it just hasn't happened. So also, you can see Amazon put in a nice bounce off 255.73. That's an important level because we had a bounce in early February off 255.11. We also had some bounce off 256.60, 257. Okay, so definite, definite support in this 255 to 257 range. Okay, so really I'm gonna make a note. Key support between 255, 257. You can see this afternoon low of 258.05 is going to be kind of also important support because the thing is, is that Amazon has tested this 255, 257 range a couple times now and it's held. So in my view, if it were to test it again, I don't believe it would be able to hold again just because it's getting to be one too many times. It's like asking a friend for a favor. You ask that friend for the same favor over and over again, eventually they start saying no. Amazon is getting tired of doing people favors by holding this 255 to 257 level, which is why I'm going to say really key support is this afternoon low at 258. Okay, 258. 05 key support below it and I expect a 255 breakdown with a 250 target overall okay as for resistance you can see Amazon was never really quite able to get meaningfully 
meaningfully above the 260 level uh, in the afternoon. So definitely 260 is key. So 260 key resistance for Amazon. Also, notice these up moves. So on this day, it, it went higher on 225 on 250k shares on 15 minute open, gave up all those gains. Uh, today, tried to move higher on 270k shares, gave up those gains. Okay, uh, go back further on on the days when it has held on to gains or, or made big pushes, for instance, like here. Oh, no, that wasn't one. I'm sorry. That was the previous day. But here you go. This is a great example. So on this day, Amazon made big gains. It opened up with 475k shares. Uh, at the 15 minute open. And then when it did pull back, it did so on only 275,000 shares. Okay. And that eventually gave way to higher prices later on in the day. This is in contrast to this move here, where Amazon moved up, okay, on 420,000 shares. But then if you look at this candle here, the pullback was on 340,000 shares. So very high volume. So one of the criteria I have for Amazon is on a 15 minute basis, volume basis, I don't want to see it pull back on greater than you know 250 to 270,000 shares or so. Firstly, though, it must have gone higher on greater than 400,000 shares at, on a 15-minute chart basis. So upside, this is what I'm going to say, upside needs 400K 15-minute volume pace for confirmation. Without greater than 250 to 270k 15 minute volume pace on pullbacks. So in other words, if Amazon were to rally above 260 tomorrow, but not do so on more than 400,000 shares uh, 15 minute volume, then I would be more apt to short that move. Okay, so we talked about the 260 resistance. Let's see some other resistance here on Amazon above 260. You can see previous support had materialized around 260, 263, 262. So on a move above 260, I'm going to target. 262 to 263. Above 260 and 262 to 263 is in play. Okay. That'll do it for Amazon. Let's cover the SPY. SPY has been giving some good trading uh, these last few days. So SPY closed at 150.02. First thing I notice on SPY just taking a quick glance at the 15-minute charts, you've had 
uh, gap up yesterday got sold into big move lower you also had a gap up today that got sold into and you moved lower okay today however you you bottomed and rallied higher whereas yesterday you did not but the thing that both of these gap ups have in common yesterday the opening 15 minute high was 152.69 today the opening 15 minute high was 149.99 both of those and then later in the day on that third candle the third candle meaning the 10 o'clock to 10.15 sequence yesterday you moved up to 152.86 which is 17 cents above the high, the first 15 minute high. And then today you moved from 99 up to 14, which you know is 15 cents above the first 15 minute high. So my main what to watch for in terms of upside on SPY is going to be the ability to move greater than 17 cents above the first 15 minute high. Okay. So if SPY is not able to do that, oh, and sorry, buy 10.15, uh, because that's that third candle that uh, we're focused in on here. Okay. If SPY isn't able to do that, then you've got the short is very much intact. Now let's examine the bottom today versus the bottom yesterday, uh, because there wasn't a bottom yesterday. So today at 11.45, we bottomed. We got a reversal that on the three minute chart it was 23 cents greater than the previous three minute close I would bet you never had such price action yesterday yeah I mean here's the only candle where it went above the prior three minute high uh, prior two three prior three minute high off of a bottom and that was a 151.30 close versus a 151.10 close so you had a, a 20 cent move you had this candle here 152.11 close versus a 151.88 close but again that wasn't in one single candle off of a bottom that wasn't off of a off of a new low of day so you know to signal low of day I'm gonna look for this same type of signal that you saw today low of day signal on greater than a 20 cent move above prior three minute candle close granted that it is off of a low of day. Okay. As for a top, you had this three minute candle on high volume pierce below the lows of the prior two three minute candles and also put in a higher low. Let's see if that also signaled a top yesterday. Here's your top. So you didn't pierce below the low, but you did on the very next candle, and then you were never able to get back above that initial low. 
So from a topping perspective, a high of day, I'm going to say high of day signal on move below previous three minute candle low where the following candle then also stays below that same low. Okay, so like your low here was 152.68. You broke below it. And then here you can see that this, you then stayed below that 152.68 low on the following candles. Okay, let's just take a, a daily glance at SPY and talk about support and resistance and also look at the hourly chart on SPY. So definite support down here at, at today's low of 148.73 up to about 149. And you can see we've put in some wicks now at 150.14, 150.20, one50 And that's interesting because this is where you had some support. Okay. So I'm going to say 150 to 150.30 is resistance. with 148.70 acting as support. And just a little more intermediate read if you do get a big volatile day. Uh, you know, just down here these previous highs around 147.20, a lot of congestion there. That could be a more intermediate term target for the spot. All right, so covered Apple in detail, Amazon and the SPY. Between those three and between Apple having an investor meeting tomorrow, Amazon not having had a six-day losing streak in three years, and the SPY being very volatile with the VIX, those three properly prepared for should give us some good opportunities.